When it comes to severe thunderstorms, there's a, a big difference between watches and warnings. So when we expect there's a potential of severe thunderstorms or tornado activity is possible, uh, then we typically will issue uh, what's called a watch. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch, tornado watch, maybe even a flash flood watch. It doesn't always mean it is occurring or it's going to, but there's a higher than a normal likelihood or a potential is out there. So that's the stage just to kind of watch the weather a little closely. When we activate uh, the office for Stormwatch, we, we are very fortunate that we use uh, local amateur radio or ham radio guys. They are our, our key eyes in the sky along with our local fire departments. So on our, on our screen, we, can, we have designated spots where we'd like people to go. Uh, those are actually high points in our county or just outside of our county in which people can get a good vantage point of storms coming our way. And we use volunteer fire departments to fill in some of those spots. And we also use our ham radio guys who also sit next to us and run the same exact software. And the reason we have that is he's controlling the ham radio guys, uh, the, the, the volunteer is, and then we control the public safety people here and we coordinate that response. And a lot of times during severe weather, there may be different parts of the county that have storms going on. So we'll take turns watching or we'll be both watching the same storm, communicating what is actually happening in the storm and what we see and what we think is happening. Uh, when it comes to warnings, on the other hand, that is the action stage. The warning means that a life-threatening weather event is expected. It could be something that someone has already reported, you know, so it is occurring, or it could be something that uh, looks severe on our radar systems so that we want people to take the proper precautions and actions to save their lives. Uh, of course, there's different types of warnings depending on the severe threat, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, again, flash flood warnings. They all have slightly different safety messages related, but the big thing is to take action when they're issued. So when we actually have severe thunderstorms on radar, uh, again, we typically will zoom in to the community where that storm is gonna impact. Uh, we start an application here, uh, uh, software that comes up very quickly. We can align uh, markers on the screen to where the storm is at. We can pick quickly the type of warning that we want. Uh, let's say severe thunderstorm warning here. Uh, it, we can align this to just the areas that we feel need to be uh, in the warning and, and make the adjustments again pretty quickly here. Uh, we also will pick the length of the warning that we feel is adequate for that particular storm. Uh, wet threats, maybe spotters have reported uh, 70 mile per hour winds and nickel size hail and then we can uh, pick a, a couple other call to actions. And then so, again, with our practice, we can do this pretty quickly. When we're ready to go with that warning, we simply create it. It, it pops up on a, on a different screen here where we've got, in this case, the severe thunderstorm, and this is just a test, but the severe thunderstorm for uh, the particular counties, the time it's valid till, and some of the information that we picked up there. So that's how we generate a warning based on information we're getting from spotters or what we're seeing on radar. Uh, of course, once we are happy with that warning uh, and save it, and again, the whole process can be as quick as uh, 15 to 35 seconds or so if, we're, um, if we know exactly what we want to warn on. That warning will hit things like weather radio, it goes out over the internet, it goes into dispatch centers on, on teletypes and the other ways they get it gets to television stations and in some cases it actually will go to your telephone through the wireless emergency alert uh, process that forwards flash flood and tornado warnings. So there's this big fan out uh, immediately once we kind of hit that send button from our office. In our siren system in Olmstead County, we have what's called a two-way digital system, uh, and the manufacturer of that is Federal Signal, which is the largest outdoor warning system in the, in the country. We have 94 sirens in our system, which include the ones that are in the city of Pine Island and down in the city of Chatfield. With, with this, uh, our digital two-way system allows us to communicate, or the sirens communicate back and forth to us all times during the day letting them know whether there's power to them 
whether there's any technical problems, things like that. Uh, the unique thing about our system is it is zoned. So we can set off individual cities or individual zones like the city of Rochester, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. Uh, that, that allows us to be specific when we're warning people. We work very hard to make sure that we're warning only the people that are actually in danger. The, the system is, is very simple to use, to, to activate it. We go to the activation screen, and as you can see, we have all of our cities divided out, the quadrants of Rochester, and then our parks. And all we have to do is simply click the button, and it asks if we want to activate it, and we hit OK. And uh, that will set the sirens off for a full three minutes. They are designed to, to cycle through uh, the tornado warning for three minutes and then they will automatically shut off. There is not, let me repeat, there is not an all clear. So if you hear the siren go off for three minutes and then 15 to 20 minutes later, you hear the sirens go off again, that means there is another threat. Uh, what we would like you to do is when you hear the sirens, get indoors. I know everybody's curiosity is look outside. Okay, if you have to, take a quick peek, then get in the basement and get watching broadcast media or get a NOAA weather radio and start listening to what the NOAA weather radio says. That's the only way to do this properly and to be safe.